Hello and welcome to everybody on Cloud Fitness. So in today's video, we are going to see what exactly is a lake house in Fabric and how to create a lake house in the Microsoft Fabric. So let's move ahead. But before moving ahead, I do recommend all of you guys to connect with me on LinkedIn as well as on Instagram. And I'm going to leave the link in the description box. So as we move ahead, Microsoft Fabric Lake House, right? So we have already seen, so let me in fact go back to the Fabric Workspace that we have created. So this is the Fabric Workspace that we have created, right? So we already told that, you know, that workspace acts like a container. Now inside that container, I have to create items. So Lake House is an item over here, which I can create. Now, the moment I hover over it, you can see what does it say? store big data for cleaning, querying, reporting, and sharing. So this is what Lakehouse is, right? It is storing the information. It is storing the data that you have, which you can use for querying, which you can share as well. You can apply transformations on top of it, and you can query it. You can use it for reporting as well. So this is what your Lakehouse is all about. You know, Lakehouse is not something which is coined by, you know, after Fabric has come. Lakehouse was a pretty, uh, you know, now it's it's a pretty old term now. In fact, I have created one video, you know, on the difference between databases, data warehouse, you know, the lake house, the Delta Lake. So all that I have already made a video as well. Like I think a year back, you can go ahead and watch that as well. So basically this Microsoft Fabric Lake House is an item within the workspace, which is used for storing and managing the data in one location. So you load the data, you're storing the data over there and you can manage the data from the one location as a Delta table and in form of files. So usually you can upload CSV, JSON and Parquet files. And you can also, you know, transform and store it in a Delta table format. So if you are coming from the Databricks background or Spark background, you would already know what a Delta table is, right? It is a table which has, uh, you know, asset, which is asset compliant. It stores the information on each operation that is happening on top of the table in the transaction log, right? Um, then this lake house can actually integrate with the other tools as well right so if i have stored the data in the lake house right i can still integrate it with the other tools now as you create a lake house automatically a sql endpoint is created by default now this sql endpoint will help you to connect to tools outside the fabric you know, using the SQL endpoint, you can connect to the tools outside of the fabric and query the data which is present in the fabric as well. So in, in the fabric lake house as well. So in turn, this fabric lake house, what it is doing, it is helping you consume the data. It is helping you store the data in the parquet or a Delta format, in a CSV JSON format, in a semi-structured or unstructured format. You can also integrate it with the other tools using the SQL endpoints and as well as you can query the data through Power BI as well. When I say query the data, right? It's not like you're querying the data, but you can create your report. A default model is also created for your Power BI from the tables that you create in the lake house so that you can use it for your reporting as well. So let's go ahead and in fact, let us create a, uh, you know, lake house so right now i am in the fabric workspace 01 and i'll go click on new and i will click on this lake house and i will say workspace 01 underscore lake house and i will click on create right so i'm creating a um, you know lake house and the moment i'm creating you will also see that it shows that a SQL endpoint is getting created and a semantic model for the Power BI is also cre getting created. So you can see over here a SQL analytics endpoint for SQL querying and a default Power BI semantic model for reporting is being created. So it is creating and you can also see that it shows that successfully created. So it has taken just a few seconds, like I think four seconds to, uh, you know, get it created. So it has created it. And uh, we will see, we will actually upload the data over here. There are multiple ways in which you can upload the data, right? Into the lake house, which we are going to see in the, you know, upcoming video as well. Now, if you click on this setting symbol over here, the moment you click on setting symbol, right? You can see over here, if you want to add a description, you can add it. 
and then you can actually see that there is a connection string over here so using the sql connection string you can actually connect to this uh, you know the tables which are created as part of the lake house and it automatically gets updated as well as you add the new table okay and uh, guys you can also see how the data can be imported into the lake house so you can see it can be imported using files it can be imported using data flows right which is coming from your azure data factory you can ingest it you know at a scale from the data pipeline you can create a notebook for it you can add a shortcut as well so these are the different ways and you know you can also import the tables directly from your system so there are different ways to import the data into the lake house we are going to see all of it so that's not um, you know a restriction that we will have we are going to see how we can uh, in fact uh, work with the different types of data within the data lake and how we can transform it as well in our upcoming videos and similarly you know if you even uh, check this particular option you can see that it will you know show you both the lake house as well as the sql endpoint that was created right and similarly if you want to add the data again the same thing that is mentioned over here on the ui you can upload the file you can create a data pipeline you can create a data flow you can add a shortcut and even the event stream so basically different ways of adding the data and from the next video onwards we are going to see how we can work with the lake house so thank you so much for being till here and do remember to like, share and subscribe to my channel.